Okay, I am so excited. I live for this stuff. I live for these kinds of stories and I'm so glad I stumbled upon it when I was researching for a week of stories based out of Rome, Georgia. I also feel a little bit validated over some feelings I had when I was a child living in Rome about a particular piece of property. And I do want to acknowledge that I did change the, the set, I guess you would call it, for today. I'm still having a little bit of some issues with my ears and my eyes. And if anybody who also has ear issues, you know, it makes you a little bit dizzy. So I, I wanted to make sure I was sitting on the sofa versus sitting on the stool I typically sit in while filming. So I do apologize if the set's not as exciting, but you'll deal with it because the story I have today is, I think, in my opinion, pretty exciting. And before we get started, remember to hit that subscribe button, give us a like, tell your friends, pass it on. And if you are from Rome and you have some really spooky story or really interesting place you want me to talk about, please message me on our Instagram. That's at Esoteric Atlanta. The same goes for anybody else who is in Georgia. If you have any stories you want me to cover later on, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Okay, here we go. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce and today we're going to be talking about CCC Road on Berry College in Rome. I mean, I knew it. I knew it. When I was a child or a teenager or whatever, I, I, I knew that there was satanic practices happening on Barry's campus. I knew it. And now I feel validated because obviously I'm not the only one who knows about this. And just to be honest with you guys, I've had so many freaking paranormal experiences in my life, starting from being a little child. I now know at 37 years old that a lot of what I've experienced does apparently have to do with my blood type. I did tell you guys in a past video that my blood type is the blood type that the global elite, the cabal, the Illuminati, thinks is just very special and there are side effects to this blood type. There's a lot of physical side effects to it. For example, I have an extra bone. I have an extra organ. I struggle with autoimmune issues. I, there are some downfalls to it, but there is this element of being very susceptible to paranormal activities and being able to see beyond the veil. Now, if I had grown up with one of these powerful families, then maybe I would have been able to learn how to use this for nefarious ways. I'm glad because I would never want to use anything for nefarious ways, but you get what I mean. And I don't think that just because I carry a particular blood type that I'm better than anyone. It's just the makeup of a blood type. In the practice of yoga, we talk about something called prana, which prana means life force. And in a lot of cases, your blood is your part of your life force in your natural form, not in your spiritual form, but your natural form. And all blood types have specific side effects. And with my particular blood type, again, it is very, very common for people who carry this blood type to have certain abilities, to be able to see be beyond the veil, to be pretty empathic. So you get what I'm talking about. And maybe in future story time videos, I'll tell you guys more stories of some crazy things that have happened to me in my life. Um, I definitely think that being exposed to certain sides of our reality that a lot of people can't see is what has pushed me down the path that I have taken where I've spent a lot of time in India. My whole life I've been trying to figure out what the meaning of life is and what God is. And I'll tell you, I'm, I'm very, even though I grew up Christian, I'm very anti-church. Uh, and No offense to people who go to church, that's awesome if you have an accountability, if you have some 
something that helps you find, that helps ground you with God, that's great. But my my experiences, because of what I've seen, what I've experienced, I, I found that when I would go to talk to a preacher or a priest or whatever, if they had not experienced what I had experienced, if God had not allowed them to see what I had seen, then how the hell were they gonna be able to guide me or help me? And I started to realize that in the Bible, especially, it basically, Jesus is like, do it yourself. You, you do it, you do you. Like you have your own relationship with God. You don't need anybody else. And that is part of the reason why I have dedicated my life to this particular practice of yoga. My teachers in India and the teachers that I've had here in the United States with this traditional form of yoga, if you were to ask them a question pertaining to spirituality, usually they answer you back by asking you another question. And they're asking you to think for yourself. They're asking you to figure it out on your own. And I love that. I, I really, really believe that most of this world has been heavily manipulated by religions and by people who want to control you versus help you. And part of my opinion on that is going to get into our story regarding this particular road on Barry campus. And so before we talk about what happens on this road and why this road is so weird and why there is so much folklore around it, we have to really go back and look at Barry College as a whole and its history. So Barry College is a private university style college, four year college that is located in Rome, Georgia, obviously. It is so large that it is kind of its own little town. I know that sounds weird. It's kind of like a town within a town. Now, Barry is a beautiful campus. I will give them that. It is gorgeous. And when I was a kid, Barry was very open to the public for people in Rome to come on the campus, to use it, to walk, to run. They hosted a lot of road races, they have a mountain campus where they have a lot of camps in the summertime, lots of hiking trails. From what I understand, it's gotten a little bit more regulated now. I'm not sure, I haven't been on Barry's campus in probably 20 years, so I, I, that's just what I've heard. And normally, so if we weren't under quarantine right now, what I would have done is I would have actually gone to Barry and driven or walked on this road before filming this video so I could really give you my opinion, but obviously right now that can't happen. So if you, further down the road when we're able to join society again, we will be going down and trying to get on this road and experiencing it for ourselves, and maybe doing a follow-up video on that. Barry College was founded and started by a woman named Martha Barry. Now, Martha Barry was born on October 7th, 1865 in Jackson County, Alabama. Her father was a man named Thomas Barry, and he was a veteran of the American Civil War. Now, and shortly after Martha's birth, the Barrys moved from Alabama to Rome, Georgia, and Rome, Georgia is right by the Alabama line, FYI, but they moved to Georgia because Thomas Berry, again, her father, co-owned Berries and Company. And Berries and Company was a company that owned grocery stores and they also owned cotton gins. And then in 1871, Thomas Berry purchased an old plantation house called Oak Hill. Now, if you can remember from our first episode on Rome regarding the clock tower, Rome has three rivers in it. Back in the day, it was a hot spot for a lot of travelers, a lot of steamboat engines. It had a lot of a huge potential to become a very, very huge city. It's kind of funny. Um, <laughs> We were laughing about all the hashtags with Rome because one of the hashtags is all roads lead to Rome, which again, they get from Rome, Italy. But at this point in current times, Rome is a very hard town to get to. When they were building I-75, apparently Rome decided it, it did not want I-75 coming by Rome. And so it's made it really complicated. You have to get off the freeway and you take all these back roads. You have to go through different towns to get to Rome. It's not 
easy to get to like it was back in the day when people used the rivers for transportation. And I do think that for Rome, not having 75 that close and not wanting it that close has really hurt its ability to grow now. But back then, gosh, with all those rivers, there was so much prosperity and so many trading posts and, and a, a great place for industry to boom. And so Oak Hill, the plantation that the berries bought, the old plantation was right on the Ustanala River. Now today, Oak Hill is a museum. And a lot of you who are not, who are watching, who are not from Rome or have never heard of Rome, you might have seen Oak Hill before. It was used in the movie Sweet Home Alabama, which was shot in 2002 with Reese Witherspoon. In fact, they used a lot of the town of Rome to shoot that movie. Even some of the New York scenes were shot in Rome. Oak Hill was the Carmichael's plantation. And in fact, Barry College itself has been used for many movies, like Remember the Titans. Remember the Titans was shot in the year 2000, or put out in the year 2000. It was with Denzel Washington, Ryan Gosling when he was a lot younger. And when they go off to their football camp, that is on Barry College's campus. Now going back to Martha Berry and her childhood living at Oak Hill, she was educated privately by tutors and she was sent up to Maryland to attend the, to attend the Edgeworth School, which was a finishing school. So those were very common back in the day. I, I talked about this a little bit with our Werewolf of Georgia that a lot of times girls, especially women from high society, were educated to a certain extent, but most of their education came through what would be a finishing school where they learned how to be proper ladies of society. Now, Martha Berry never married. She gave her life to educating underprivileged children who came from local Georgia farmers. And around Oak Hill, this is where we get the start of Barry College. Oak Hill is now on one side of the street and Barry College is on the other. So back in that time, this whole property, or most of the property, not all of it that we see today, was owned by her father, Thomas Barry. So in the 1890s, Thomas Barry gave his daughter, Martha, 83 acres of land so that she could build a little log cabin, a little small school, to start working with these children who otherwise would not have the chance at a, an education. And reading about this actually like hurt my heart. Barry College now is one of the more expensive schools that you can go to. In fact, I looked up their tuition price and their tuition price for the 2019-2020 year including room and board, okay, so that includes if you live on campus, was $50,316 for one year of school. So basically $50,000 for one year of school. And the University of Georgia for in-state tuition for the 2019-2020 year was $11,500, where out-of-state tuition was $20,600. So huge difference between the University of Georgia and Barry College. Now granted, yes, Barry College is a private school now, but I mean, it, it, it's painful to see that this woman started teaching children who could not afford to have an education and now it's turned into this huge, very expensive school. Now granted, they do have work study programs. There are programs where you can work for the school and get a deduction from your tuition. And of course they have scholarships and all sorts of stuff, but that's beside the point. It just really like, I, I wonder what Miss Martha Berry would think about the fact that her project to the, the, what she dedicated her life to helping these children and now it's turned into this huge money-making establishment. And I have absolutely nothing against private schools. I am private school born and bred. I don't know much about like public schools here. I really only went to private school. So that is where I'm coming from. I am coming from a private school education. So I'm not, I don't, I don't have anything against private schools. I just have, uh, what my problem is, is I have a problem with the intention of what Barry has done 
what it started out as is so different than what it is now, at least in my opinion. But anyway, let's continue. So over time, obviously, Miss Barry's little school started to grow. She did start to incorporate a boarding facility for some schools. She had both a girls' school and a boys' school. And in 1926, Barry became a junior college. So a junior college would be a two-year college. I know for my friends possibly watching in Europe, we have different terms. Like I know that you guys call a four-year school university and maybe more of a, a college being more your upper sixth form for England especially, which would be the last two years of high school for us. So I know that might sound really confusing. So a junior college, so our upper school or our high school years are ninth through 12th grade. And then after that, when you go on to your continuing education, you can go to like a vocational school if that's your calling where you can learn how to do hair or all sorts of really great stuff. I think vocations are fantastic. I think that people who have vocations are laughing at everybody else all the way to the bank. But if you decide to go another route, then you have junior colleges, which are two-year colleges, and you can get an associate's degree from a two-year college. A lot of people will use a two-year college and then transfer after to their final two years at a university, which is the full four-year college. So for my friends overseas, college and university pretty much mean the same thing. So when someone says they went to college, that means that they went to university. Um, and then in 1930, so four years after it was given its two-year college to be a junior college, it became a full four-year college in 1930. Martha Berry actually passed away on February 27th, 1945. So she did get to see a little bit more, uh, she, get to, she got to see her school grow. And that must have been a pretty nice feeling to start with such a small little school and see it grow. And then in 1962, it became Barry Academy. And in 1983, the year that I was born is when it incorporated as Barry College. Again, it was already a four year college, but then it incorporated as Barry College. That's when I believe from what I studied, it became like this expensive school, um, which had the work study programs and scholarships and all that kind of stuff that I talked about before. But that was in 1983. Barry College is a liberal arts college. It is a Christian school. We're gonna get more into that later on. It is 60 miles from Atlanta, Georgia, and it has 80 miles of trails that, again, like I said, when I was a kid, these trails were open to the public, although I have heard that perhaps that's not necessarily true now and I have my own little conspiracy theory around that regarding the story we're going to talk about. They also have the Winship Foundation. That's a camp that was started by the founder of Chick-fil-A. Um, most of you guys are very aware that Chick-fil-A is a very Christian organization as well. All right, so now we're going to get into our story regarding CCC Road, which is one of the roads on Barry's campus. Now, a little side note. Like I said in the beginning, Barry to me, it's 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 gorgeous. Like I absolutely would go hiking on Barry. We we go out, we're very, we seek out adventures. We like to go up into the mountains, we like to do fun activities. Um, and I would definitely go back to Barry and hike again. Um, I'm I'm not I'm I have suspicions around Barry. Now, when I was a kid, Barry was a dry campus uh, because it was a Christian campus. I'm assuming it probably still is. So yeah, very strict in a lot of ways. And, you know, some people like that. I, I don't know. I think that, you know, college is definitely a time when you're kind of still a kid, but also like an adult at the same time. So I definitely think it's like this safe space for people to to test their own boundaries and kind of learn a few things about themselves. So I, I have a problem with that much restriction, but again, to each his own. Some people like that. And I, that's why I didn't go to Barry. I, I don't want to be under that much lock and key, you know? Um, but interesting, a lot of people, I didn't know this, but I guess a lot of people call it scary Barry. There are apparently a lot of hauntings on Barry's campus, which I just kind of skimmed through that because what I'm interested in is more interested in it is the satanic element to Barry College. 
Now, Barry College is, again, famous for a lot of things. It also has a lot of chapels on its campus. And like I said, I'm gonna reiterate again, this campus is huge. It's so big. And a lot of the schools that I went to for higher education, they were in cities, and so they would have campuses kind of all over the city. It was a little bit scattered. But Barry is all together on the same plot of land. It's big enough to be its own zip code, its own little area. And there are so many chapels and churches on this campus. And one of the chapels that they have on this campus lies at the end of CCC Road, and this church is called the Mountain Spring Church. From what I understand, where Mountain Spring Church sits at the end of CCC Road is was not its original place. Uh, from what I read, it sounded like they mo actually moved the church. I could be wrong about that though. I was having a little bit hard time following some of the old paperwork. The church was deeded by a man named John L. Cook on September 23rd of 1880. Nine and this church has gone through a lot of like reincarnations. It looked like it was a Methodist church at one point and an Episcopalian church at another point. Side note, I like both Methodist and Episcopalians. <laughs> I know Episcopalians are called Wiscopalians and I think that's fantastic. And I think the Methodists are like the least cult-like of all the Christian faiths. Like seriously, if you look at the bite model, the Methodist church falls very low on the bite model. That means that they don't try to control their their members or congregation at all, which I think is fantastic because I really, really, really cannot stand religious organizations that try to turn their faith and their the vulnerability of their congregation into a manipulative cult. That's wrong don't do that. And there are a lot of churches that do do that, but the Methodists seem to be pretty cool people. Now, the church also has a graveyard around it. And from, like I said, for the most part, I, besides our Oakland Cemetery graveyard, I don't really think graveyards are that spooky. I, I wouldn't want to hang out in a graveyard unless it was Oakland. Cause again, Oakland was a very social spot. But other than that, I wouldn't want to hang out in the graveyard. I would want to go to my house or to where my loved ones are, are hanging out. So normally graveyards don't really like catch my eye that much, but the church that stands at, so this Mountain Spring Church that stands at the end of this road, apparently according to what I read is that it still functions as a church like once a month during the summertime. I'm not sure if there is any air conditioning at this church. <laughs> When I was a little girl, I remember going back to South Carolina with my mom, my grandmother Maxine, my mom, and my Aunt Mary Jo, who is since, she's since passed away. Well, both my grandmother and my Aunt Mary Jo have since passed away. I remember going back to South Carolina with them, and we went to a wedding of some cousin, some distant cousin, and the wedding was held on the Bryce, one of the old Bryce properties. Again, for those, if this is your first time watching, Bryce is my mother's maiden name. I'm not being egotistical it's her family's last name so when I say Bryce property it's my mom's family's property and there was an old family church that the wedding was held in and it didn't have like air conditioning or heat and I remember wearing this red sweater and being miserable it was horrible oh I think I have PTSD I was so young I was probably like four or five, I was so young. But yes, I just can't, like I, oh my God. And Lord have mercy on our souls. It is so damn hot here in the summertime. Why the hell would you wanna go, praise the Lord, in an old rickety building without air conditioning? It is 2020, go sit in a church with air conditioning, please. But anyway, this church is, legend has it that this church also works as a satanic church. I'm serious. Don't laugh, I'm serious. And this isn't uncommon, just, this happens, I mean, there's like churches up in Roswell that are also apparently, you know, Jesus Church by day, Luciferian Church by night. Now, Barry has a lot of places. There's a lot of wilderness in Barry. There are over 80 miles of hiking trails, like I said, and there's a lot of different buildings there. And it has a lot of folklore that a lot of people will say there are specific places at Barry where satanic rituals happen or SRA 
happen. And when I was a kid, I believed it. Like you feel it. It feels so freaking creepy. And one time I was with a friend, it was in high school and we were driving out to the mountain campus and there's this really long patch of road when you go from you know, the main campus to the mountain campus. And there are these like dirt roads, or at least there were back this was in the nineties off the side. And we pulled off and we were, my friend was so intrigued and wanted to try to find some of these satanic churches. So we went, this was at night, it was evening. It was dark. We went back into the woods and we did stumble upon this, what appeared to be an altar. And there were like voodoo dolls and it was really creepy. And my, my friend started picking them up, which of course I freaked out. I was like, just leave it. Don't touch it. I, my family's from South, the little country, South Carolina, like this stuff is real. Like just leave it, leave it, leave it. So I have seen with my own two eyes that this is not just folklore. This is not just legend. There are legitimately satanic practices happening on this campus. Now, again, if that's what you want to do, if you want to like praise the devil, then you, that's, that's your prerogative. You have freedom of religion in this country. What irks me and what makes me mad is when there are sacrifices involved that involved killing an innocent animal or killing a human being. I just are casting negative stuff out towards people that's crossing a line. But if you want to like hang out with Satan by yourself, then you know, whatever. But just, I just don't like the whole sacrificial part. Now sacrifices are necessary in positive polarizing positive faiths as well. For example, for me to be able to participate in the yoga practice that I do, I have to go to bed very early. When we're not under quarantine, I typically get up at 3.30 in the morning to do my practice and teach my Mysore program. I follow an extremely strict diet. I don't eat any animal. I'm a completely 100% like vegetarian, you know, so that is a sacrifice, but that's a sacrifice for me. I am doing something just that just affects me. It doesn't affect anybody else or anybody else's life. It's just mine. Does that make sense? And yes, I have seen places up in that Rome area near Barry where there have been goats that have been sacrificed. I've seen it and it's real. This sh is real. Now it's also, I don't know if I can explain this well, but I'm gonna try. I, like I said earlier, Barry is a Christian campus. There's nothing wrong with a school being a Christian school, but they take it to like a whole other level. They're like evangelical, you know, dry campus. And for me, that gives me the heebie jeebies. I don't see Jesus in that. I, I don't, there is so much. Like I, the church I grew up in was evangelical. And I know for sure that there was a lot of spiritual manipulation. There was a lot of narcissistic abuse that was happening. I've had to talk about a lot of things that happened at, that the church I grew up in that have caused me, that have contributed to CPTSD or complex post-traumatic stress disorder. And I, again, am very skeptical of these big organizations that claim to be Christian. I, I don't believe them. Like, I don't, I don't believe you. I don't believe that you're doing anything holy. I think you're trying to control people. I think you're trying to manipulate people. I think you're trying to abuse people. If you literally wanna help somebody, you're not gonna behave in the way that these big organiz Christian organizations behave. And if you do get deep into studying Luciferian cults and satanic cults, there are, again, online, some people who have been interviewed where they talk about infiltrating the Christian faith. They send people, Luciferian or satanic people into these Christian churches and they manipulate the churches and they turn it into something it's not, it's not. So I always tell people like you do you, but especially if you're going to one of these like big churches, you gotta start to ask yourself some questions. Who is this preacher? Where do they come from? And what is it they're manipulating me to do? Where is, is there mind control happening? All sorts of stuff. So I know some people are gonna think that's crazy, but I do not trust the faith that Barry College says it has. I don't trust it. If you are legitimately a Christian school, I don't. I think you would loosen your reins of control over people or over your students. I understand the legal drinking age 
in the United States is 21 years old. So I understand that you have to abide by those legal legal laws, but I think you exert too much control for you to be considered Christian, in my opinion. I don't think Jesus would approve, in my opinion. Again, strictly my opinion. So with that being said, I don't think that these satanic churches, these satanic practices that are popping up all over Barry campus are not like polar opposites of the campus itself. I don't. I think that because of the way the campus is set up, because of the way they're, they're running their programs, these satanic practices are able to flourish because they're coming from the same seed. Now, I need to step back a little bit because I do know that there are people who work at Barry College, that teach at Barry College, that go to Barry College, that have really good hearts and that are truly trying to be good people and really are very Christian and follow Jesus and are amazing, amazing human beings. I'm not talking about those people. I feel like those people are very good people and they're just maybe have the wool pulled over their eyes a little bit. I'm talking about the powers that be. And again, this is all just my opinion. This You're free to have your own opinion about it as well. The truth is though, that there are satanic practices happening on Barry's campus. I've seen it with my own eyes and people typically believe that this church at the end of this road is used for nefarious purposes. It's not just one person, it's a lot of people that believe this. And I think that you have to start to look at things that if there are a lot of people that are having the same opinion over something, maybe where there's smoke, there's fire. But anyway, let's move on. So the road itself that leads out to this satanic church, allegedly, um, has a bit of a mystery too. It says that once you start going down the road, west down the road, you will drive over seven different bridges. But when you turn around and come back the other way, you will only go over six bridges. Weird, right? And I, I actually believe this. I have this feeling that as time goes on, I, I believe that we're in the middle of a great awakening right now. And I think that we're going to start to understand consciousness and how it more deeply how it actually works. And I do think that there's some weird kind of space reality and very much what Tesla was studying and Einstein was studying. And I, I, I believe that people are literally counting seven bridges going one way and six coming back the other. And as I mentioned before, there are a lot of hauntings on Barry's campus, and I'm not really going to get into all of them except for one. There is the Green Lady, and I looked up, so I was curious, so I got online and I researched different colors of spirits and what they represent. If you see a green spirit, according to some of the websites, it, it means that the spirit is happy. It's a good ghost, and it's pretty attracted to nature. So this ghost that is on this road it seems to like being there and it doesn't seem to want to do any harm to you if you see her apparently the ghost that lives on this road is the combination of two spirits two little girls who died in one of the creeks which ccc stands for like cold creek something i couldn't get the full name of the road but it it does mention the word creek in there so i'm assuming there is a creek by the road Apparently they drowned in this creek and if you stand on a particular spot on the road and spin around three times, apparently this green lady will appear to you. So it used to be that you could drive down this road. Well, now they've blocked it off. You can't drive down the road. You can only walk it. Um, and uh, like I said earlier, it seems that they're doing that with a lot of trails. I don't know if they're trying to control the amount of SRA that's happening on campus or or what but it sounds like there was way more freedom to go about the campus back in the 90s when I was a kid than maybe there is today but for CCC apparent road apparently you can walk down it you just can't drive down it anymore well when I was researching this I did find a few reddit chains and I'm going to read one of the responses to the reddit to you because i think that this person it's better to tell the story in her own words so here we go yes i have been there once my parents talked about it and some older friends and i decided to ride out one day and check it out when i was 14 years old 
I am now 51. The bridges did actually count seven in and six going out. When we made it to the church, we got out of the car and you could see a huge tree that had been cut down with a small ax drove into its side. All of us except one talked about the evil, sadistic feeling of being there. Judging from the side, it looked like a sacrificial area. The door of the church was open and you could see most of the pews were gone and things were thrown about over the floor. It was very run down. Everyone walked on ahead of me. We were laughing and cutting up. I kept hearing something walking in the, in the woods, but saw nothing. When I began to walk and maybe took eight to 10 steps, a, a tree that was approximately 12 to 15 inches in diameter fell right in front of me. It came to rest about two feet in front of me. The only sound of the tree fall I heard was when the tree hit the ground. There were no limbs except in the very top of the tree. It scared me so bad I threw up. It was overwhelming, like time stood still. It scared me and my friends very bad. When I got myself together, we left, and as far as I know, none of us have ever been back. I have a police scanner now, and over 20 years ago, there were quite a few calls to go out there in reference to devil worshipers and sacrificial events taking place there at the church. It is sad that these things happen in our world, but the Bible does speak of demons and spirits and the state of the dead. It is very interesting and has helped me put today's life into much better perspective. I don't know about you guys, but when I read that on Reddit, it gave me chill bumps. This woman remained anonymous on Reddit. So if you are from Rome and you're watching this, thank you so much for sharing your story. Um, it said that you wrote that five years ago and holy crap. So 20 years ago, five years ago, 2015, 20 years ago would have been 1995. Hell yeah, there was satanic, satanic stuff happening in 1995 out there. I... 100% believe you. I felt it. I saw some remnants of it in. I believe you. And I would not be surprised if it's still happening today. I mean, what's that saying? The devil's greatest trick was convincing the world he didn't exist. So yeah, that story of CCC Road and the whole of Barry College anyway, and it's supposed connection to Satanism is stuff that I could literally talk about all day long. I, this stuff, especially the whole bridge thing, driving out and seeing seven bridges going one way and six bridges coming out the other. I mean, talk about a mind scramble. I mean, have you experienced that? I, when we're able to drive up to Rome and walk this road, I literally, I can't wait. I can't wait to see, to try to figure out what's happening, coming back to take a bridge away. I don't know. Do you have a, a logical explanation? Is it a time space continuum sort of thing? What about the church? Have you been out there? Do you get the heebie jeebies? Do you feel that way when you're on Barry's campuses? Did you graduate from Barry? Did you see anything? Please let me know in the comments. I really, really, really am so curious. Again, I'm going to say this all the time. Don't care what religion you are. Really don't. My only concern is how you treat other people and other living things. So, all right, guys, thank you so much for sitting in on this story. That was our second Rome, Georgia story. Um, I'm going to go ahead and film the next Rome, Georgia story for the next day. And again, thank you to Josh McCabe for doing our music, for Todd Broderick for doing our editing. And thank you to you guys for joining in in the fun. I hope you're enjoying these videos. I am having fun making them. I'm learning things. So I thank you guys so much. Be safe, be well, use your critical thinking skills. You own your mind. You have sovereignty over your body. Nobody should control you. No one. All right. I'll see y'all later. Bye.